<laughs> it's the perfect chair for you. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> this is what it's going to be like the whole Q and A. <laughs> You're sat on the mic, Anthony. <laughs> So guys, we couldn't react to the season four trailer on the big screen, but I know you all watched it last night. What's it like seeing the fans go absolutely crazy for it online and in person? A lot of people have been talking to you about it today. What's, what's the reaction been like? You all ready for season four? Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's amazing. I mean, it, you know, we've obviously it's been a, the actors strike, which was like COVID two for us. Um, and it's just great. Now we've finally got some traction coming out. We get to show you guys what we've been working on. And uh, I've heard word from people that didn't need to say it that it's the best season yet. So it's going to be fucking great. So it's no doubt one of the wildest shows on TV. And the shock value like, advances the story. It's not for the sake of it. But when you have episodes titled Herogasm, you're like, what the hell is going to happen in this episode? And you two, you know, you, you had it rough in that episode. And all three of you, what are the wildest scenes you've had to film where you're just like, this is absolutely nuts? We should, talk, we should just get Laz to talk all about Herogasm. <laughs> Laz, you threw getting, the short straw. Getting choked by giant dicks. You had a good time. Because <laughs> he on. loves talking about it. Laz. No, no, no. That was season two when I got choked up by it. You've had a relationship with that cock for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> season three is when I got basted. <laughs> oh, yes. I got, got coated. You got drenched. It's true. A slight drenching. Yeah. Um, yeah, season four has some fluids. I can't really get into details, but there will be some, uh, some liquid going on from... <laughs> Use your imagination. Anywhere liquid can flow from. I'll be there to receive it. <laughs> I mean, the Deep was enjoying himself uh, at that point. Like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. He, Mother's he, he, Milk wasn't enjoying it, but you, the Deep was having a great time. He had liquid, too. It was just seawater. It was just a lot of, a lot of seawater and uh, sea, sea animals. He lied. Yeah, that was probably the craziest scene was Herogasm that uh, I had to... I had to shoot with that 60-pound octopus animatronic wrapped around my waist. It was uh, weird. Yeah. Have you had to wear? Have you worn your gills since season two? Yes, yes, yes. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. I accidentally put my fingers in his gills. <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> yeah, come this on. is not. It's not gill fucking if you're not. Little did I know they were filled with KY jelly. <laughs> yeah, the most disgusting thing. He's the best looking guy ever. He's the worst wingman, because you're always, <laughs> I'm always goose man to his maverick. <laughs> Fuck you. But, uh, Not but true. He's, the, he's the best looking guy with the ugliest fucking girls. It's wonderful. I don't know what you're talking about, man. They're pretty. They're beautiful. <laughs> they got a great voice, though. Thank you. Anthony, you had some harrowing scenes that Homelander had a brilliant time. You know, you pushed your son off a roof. You annihilate, annihilated a plane full of people. What's a standout moment for you? Definitely enjoyed pushing the kid off the roof. <laughs> what? <laughs> How many of your parents? <laughs> Fuck you if you think you haven't thought about it. at least once pushing your kid off the fucking roof. And he was fine. It was good parenting. So that was fun. Um, there is a scene coming out, I can't tell you what it is, but it's, it's in season four. And I, <laughs> I can't tell you what it is. But I've done some pretty weird shit in my career and in this show. And I stopped at one moment in the scene, I looked at the person I'm doing the scene with and I went, what the fuck are we doing? How do we get, I could have been a lawyer, I could have been a dentist, not a doctor, because I'm too fucking thick. But, um, but definitely a lawyer. Uh, any lawyers here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking sue me. Um, <laughs> but no, there's been so many crazy scenes on this, on this show, and I think season four is... Um, <laughs> you just have to see it. 
Because one of the more famous scenes, Chase and the dolphin scene, the deep and the dolphin scene. Now that was shot on the same day as the plane scene with you, and you went over to yeah, it was Chase's actually. Lot. So does that happen regularly? Are, are you reading the call sheets and like, oh, something crazy is happening with lads today? Maybe it was the hero gasm episode. You're like Anthony's like, I'm coming over watching that scene get shot. And no, so, I did not. I go, kind of. I, d- I had no interest in watching him get covered in ejaculate. <laughs> But you want to see Thanks. a dolphin, right? But you, I you, did you, want to yeah. see a dolphin fly okay. through a fucking windscreen, yeah. <laughs> well, it was, cra- it was crazy. It was like lit in a warehouse soundstage like this. Almost like the, you know, X-Wing back there. It had the big airplane tube. I was kind of watching Auntie a few takes do their thing. And then, you know, I'm over in this little van. And they're just kind of like shaking this van. And I got the, you know, the, the dolphin in the back just spritzing them down with some water. And that was it. It was just kind of in this van, not talking to anyone, but an animatronic dolphin. So there you go. And what's it like introducing Jensen Ackles as Soldier Boy? Because he's your dad, and he's your sworn enemy, Laz. You've got a lot of unfinished business with him. Yes. You know, it was, it was great to work with Jensen because uh, Jensen is a comedian. So just when you think we had our own kind of like inside jokes, in comes Jensen, and now we have more jokes. It, it was literally like non-stop laughter on set. He pretended he didn't play backgammon. We, we have like little backgammon championships uh, when we shoot the boys side of things. And Jensen came in and was losing. And then he started winning very convincingly and we realized he was just losing us all. So, you know, we, we had our own little like thing going on. They go crazy. <laughs> they have backgammon tournaments. <laughs> and they got... <laughs> They got played by Jensen and his backgammon skills. <laughs> wild times on set. Yeah, we're the wild ones, as you can tell. And Anthony, what about your developments with Jensen's character as well? Does he just walk around set and be like, you know, call me dad? <laughs> no, we, the, 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 here's the good news. Je, uh, we've, got a, we've actually got a great bunch of people on the cast and, and the crew. The whole team making the show is amazing. And he came in in the third season. It's really difficult to come into a group that's already up and running. And, um, you know, he's the new guy. So you're sort of wondering, what's he going to be like? What, is he going to be a dick or is he going to be cool? He's the nicest guy and he just fits straight in with everyone. Um, and he's good looking. Great hair. Triple threat, really. And um, he's kind of the person you want to hate, but you can't. So anyway, I, I'm going off topic. No, he's great. And it was great doing scenes with him. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about him. Anthony, I felt really bad for you when the viral clip went out in the past week or so of you getting elevated on the wires and you're saying, F this, see this. You were, you were not happy at all. Have you guys ever had that experience where you're just, he's just been a bit of a diva, weren't he? Let's be honest. Just scare the bikes, come on, come on. No, it was fucking high, dude. <laughs> It was, it was, it was, I saw it and I was like, dumb as a fucking post. I walked in and went, you want to put me up there? Yeah, 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 sounds good. And then as I was getting up there, and there's nothing underneath, just concrete. And, <laughs> and every word that I said was real. And then you can hear me at the, at the top going, deep breathing. Because <gasps> it was fucking terrifying. It was like, I think it was like 85 feet. Wow, so, crazy. yeah. And you, now you guys go, ooh. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> no, but it was fucking terrifying. You guys ever have an experience like that on set where you've just been like, I'm in complete fear right now. I'm not comfortable with this at all. I thought I was going to have a lot of cool stunts to do, a lot of cool water scenes and swimming. But no, I was just never in the water, never doing any stunts, just always in the therapist's office, just talking about my problems and making love to an octopus. So there, yeah, it was a lot of fun. What about you, Laz? I'm always getting covered in shit. <laughs> That's really the uh, mother's milk's uh, uh, life right there. Okay, guys, let's start making the cue. Any questions you want to ask, let's get it to him. All right. 
Hey guys, I really love the boys and um, I was just wondering how has the popularity of the show affected you guys as people? Because I imagine like on the one hand you've got all these people who love you and love your acting but on the other it must be quite difficult especially if you get like comparisons to your character like I know Anthony on Instagram and stuff people call you Homelander in the comments all the time does that get to you or just embrace it? It doesn't really bother me at all I mean I guess it's a compliment in a weird way um, I, no, it's fine. You know, the, the internet is a very strange place. So anything that gets said on social media, I don't really care. And everyone's actually very, you know, generally people are very effusive and very complimentary about us and the show and, you know. And the only person that's really changed is Laz. He's just turned into a giant egotistical maniac. <laughs> I get DM'd all the Homelander memes, and then I DM them to him. <laughs> it's true. His memes have just made my freaking life. I love them. I laugh out loud, like for real, at home. They're fantastic. Yeah. So if you're a meme creator, keep doing it. Yeah, but also fuck that. If you're a meme creator, pay me. <laughs> I didn't get paid for any of this shit, but I'm everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, thank you. Sweetheart. Hiya. Um, it's a bit of a random question, but if you were all on death row, what would be your final meal? Fucking hell. <laughs> Big Mac, for sure. <laughs> final meal on death row? Yeah. Three Big Macs. What do you do for a job? I'm a teacher. I thought you were going to say fucking Undertaker or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking morbid. Uh, I don't know. Probably lasagna. I like lasagna. <laughs> what do you want me to fucking say? Death Row was a rap label to me, so I would be rapping with Snoop Dogg, smoking some weed. There you go. He doesn't smoke weed anymore. He gave up? No, he eats it now or whatever oh. the fuck. It was all a marketing ploy. <laughs> He's never going to stop smoking weed. Come on. <laughs> Thanks for the question. It was great. Yeah. I'm sure everyone feels uplifted. <laughs> I'm Molly, and I was wondering what your go-to karaoke song is, and what would your characters be? Ooh. Oh, I want to dance with someone by Whitney Houston. Ooh. Really? That's, I mean, I try. I I try to butcher it. You know. Your karaoke song. I can't hit the. I can't hit Whitney the notes. Houston. <laughs> I can't hit the notes Whitney though. Whitney Houston. That's the whole point. I did not see that coming. That in Guns N' Roses. Uh, mine's Sweet Caroline, and I'm not gonna sing it. That's so down the middle. I I'll sing Sweet Caroline if he whacks out some Whitney Houston. <laughs> the challenge. It ain't happening. Go, 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 go. Anyone want to see that? I can't do it. No, no, no. Come on. No, Guys, we need a full bar, and we need to be there for we hours full before bar. the shit is happening. They have a full bar. Ciao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine would probably be uh, Californication. There you go. By uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Good choice. See, we're dorks, and he's cool. <laughs> Is it the same as your characters, or...? What's that? Is it the same as your characters? Like, would your ca what would your character's song be for karaoke? I'd... Oh. M.M. would definitely be an uh, old-school hip-hop song. So it would probably be like LL Cool J, I'm Bad, maybe. Yeah, I think I homies think. would be hurt by Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> Don't fucking laugh at that. <laughs> it's a very serious emotional moment. No, yeah, I think the deep would be the same. It'd be Whitney Houston, for sure. Yeah, no question. Thank wow, you. the deep. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Um, so, Obviously online there's a lot of fan debate over who would win between Omni-Man and Homelander. So my question is in two parts. Who do you guys think would win? And um, for Anthony, if J.K. Simmons was up for it and um, both are owned by Amazon, would you cross over with Invincible to fight Omni-Man? Let me ask you right here, right now. Who do you think would win? Omni-Man. <laughs> huh? No hesitation, Omni-Man. Security! Get him the fuck out. <laughs> Laser him right now. No, you're probably right. I yeah. mean, but he is a cartoon, right? Yeah, but... 
How are we going to make that switch? Well, The Boys has been a cartoon, hasn't it? Well, not in this iteration. It was a graphic novel, actually. No, but wasn't The Boys Diabolical a cartoon? Yeah, but that was different. It wasn't about specific characters necessarily. It was like, there was also things about a janitor and all that. Yeah. Anyway, Homelander would win. Let's just leave it at that, all right? <laughs> I agree to disagree, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, go and fucking sit down then. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I will gladly buy the first round if I get to hear Sweet Caroline. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, question for Anthony. Uh, congratulations on Cobweb. I thought it was an amazing horror film. For a You're reason. the one that saw it. I saw it. Mm. I saw it. I, I knew you'd see yeah. it. You said in an interview that you were worried that people gravitated to Homelander too much. And in Cobweb, it's the same. You're clearly a red flag, but I'm still allured by you. What do you think is the take-home message you want people to get from Homelander? But equally for Chase and Lars, how would you kill him if you could? <laughs> Let me think about anything redemptive for my guy and you guys just talk about killing me. I would summon all the sea anemones and dolphins <laughs> and starfish <laughs> and piranha He'd have to, I'd have to lure you into the, into the water, into the ocean, basically. None of that would work. <laughs> But it's a I good would try. invite Homelander to Harlem. There you go. To a strip club in Harlem. <laughs> and make it rain on him. He'd get clapped. What does that mean when you say that? Because <laughs> that, you know, I know what that means, like make it rain with dollar bills. I, would have, like, I would have love sausage in the back waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> and really make it rain on them. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, and what was the other thing? Um, well, you said that you actually didn't want people to like Homelander as much as they do. Oh, no, I can't control that. But um, it's pretty fucking weird that they do. But I think a lot of people miss the point. A lot of people on the, on the right, right side of, especially American politics, didn't quite get what the character was representing, who and what, and I think, I mean, it's, there's something quite funny to that, because it means they're dumb, dumb as a bag of hammers, but, um, I mean, I think that's one of the things about the character as well, is like, it's, we've tried to make it so it's a little bit more complicated than just a villain, and, um, and, and, it, and it somehow works. The weird thing is that I get lots of people coming <laughs> saying they love Homelander, it's like, you're fucked up. I am, and see you at the bar. See you at the bar. Hello. Hello. Um, now that you've been doing The Boys for four seasons, I was wondering, is there anything that any of you have taken from set, or hypothetically, would you want to take anything home? Just friendships. <laughs> I want to leave that suit in the fucking trailer. I don't ever want to see that thing again, so that thing can stay there. Yeah. The suit? My suit. That's all, I, that's all I do. That's all I have in the trailer. Yeah. yeah, I haven't taken anything home either. I don't know that they'll let us take the suits home because they're too expensive. <laughs> At the end of the show, whenever the show I finishes, couldn't afford it. I would take a suit home. Maybe. Maybe an American flag. There may have been some Air Jordans that yeah, somehow sure. accidentally ended up in Los <laughs> Angeles, California. Yes. I don't know how, but possibly. There you go. Possibly. Yeah, that's because look at the two of us. We dress in fucking wetsuits. That's what I mean, yeah. I mean, and he dresses suit. cool. It's like, yeah, I'm going to take my fucking work gear home. <laughs> look like the biggest twat in the world. Those, imagine me walking around in those fucking red boots. What a... I'd look like such a twat. Hi, guys. Is there any fight sequence or stunt that was done that another actor done that you would have wanted to have done yourself and you were jealous of one of the other actors in the show? Would have loved to get tangled up with love sausage. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Smutty mind. I'm always going to come back to that. If you ever wanted to, I'd just go to Glasgow on a Saturday night and that'll... Uh, no, man. I mean, uh, I I've pretty much tangled, tangled with the sausage every time. <laughs> It's been me. I, I wish I could say it was a, a stunt double, but nah, it was me. And... Uh, They bring that thing out, it's like a fire hose. Like, it's, it's rolled up in a big spool, 
and they unroll it, and it's probably about 25, 30 feet long. And, uh, you know, you, you got you to gotta just commit to getting down and dirty with it. Okay. Thank you. Hello, hello. Hello again. Uh, hi, um, I've asked this question to yourself, Anthony, in regards to uh, what advice would you give for yeah, that's aspiring right. actors? Yes. And uh, I suppose a direct your question to the rest of the panel as well, but I suppose I'd add as opposed to it would be, uh, is there anything that particularly inspired you, you any, any use for a, um, to, to pursue a career in the film or television industry as such, uh, or as actors? For me, it was uh, Sylvester Stallone, man. Like, I, I loved his story as a kid on how he wrote and directed Rocky you know, because nobody would hire him. And he created his own path. And he was like in his 30s when he was finally able to make it. And, you know, they tried to hire another actor and he fought to keep himself in the movie. And so that type of story really inspired me to pursue this career. Didn't he do porn? Yes, he did. He, he was the Italian stallion. He did porn, right? I think it was, uh, there's a movie called Paradise Ali. I think that was the actual title. I don't ask me how I know that. I just took a question there. I'm not suggesting he did or he didn't. I, I was, I, I Are you turning your nose up to porn? I don't know, but there's a lawyer down here that can help me out in a minute. Yeah, I, I, I'm not familiar. I just remember reading it like a film trivia sort of thing. I think they, they, there was like a distributor thing where they, like, they changed it to Italian Italian because right. they apparently wouldn't know. I don't know, it's just random. What I would say, just to come back to your question that you asked me at the table, Anyone that's careering, any, any sort of uh, career path that is difficult, doesn't matter whether it's in the arts, when you tr set your targets high, don't listen to any other fucker and just keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you. All right. So, sorry, uh, sorry, Chase, do you have any sort of... Oh, yeah, no, I was agreeing with him, but also, yeah, I mean, if I, if I could go back and start when I was young, I would just start earlier when I was younger and try and find, like the best possible training scenario to get into, you know, that was like a well-rounded, for just for acting, I mean, and writing. I would start writing earlier and doing, you know, voice movement, all that stuff, you know, so, yeah. Thank you very much. For sure. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Oh. Uh, hiya. Uh, just wanted to say, such a big fucking fan of all of you. I think you're all amazing. Love the boys. Like, you're all awesome. Um, I do have a question, though, for... Um, Anthony, not necessarily about the boys. Um, I watched Auntie Donna's House of Fun on Netflix, and you turned up as the stray man. Stray man. The stray, well, and I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. I just want to know, like, how the hell did you turn up as the stray man in Auntie Donna? Like, how did that come about? So Jack, you know, Jack Quaid that plays um, Huey, He's into sketch comedy, and he turned me on to these guys, Auntie, the Australian sketch comedy group, Auntie Donna, and they won a, um, there's a competition with Netflix to do a sketch comedy show, and they won it. So they made their show, and we'd been DMing, and they said, do you want to come on? And I went, sure, I'll come on. I had no idea what I was going to do. It was the most absurd fucking thing. But it was the, one of the most fun times I've had on, had on a set. I was, if you look at the show, he was, like, I was just laughing the whole time when he's, like, stabbing me. I was just laughing. It's not going to make much sense to those of you that haven't seen it, but go check it out. Auntie Donna's House of Fun. Yeah, how, how'd you feel about being de-sexed in the show? Next question. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Hi. Um, if you could choose one song that perfectly represents your character, which one would it be and why? All three of you. Nine Inch Nails Hurt. Yeah. Britney Spears, um, just all of her songs, really. He's gonna come up with fucking Whitney Houston. I will always love you. No, I think there was a Britney Spears pop song playing in the Dolphin scene in the first season, I think, right? No, yeah. it was, um, wasn't it Spice was Girls? It? Spice Girls. It was, That's Spice, it was Spice, Spice Girls. Girls. Yeah, yeah. Spice Girls. Way off. Okay. The deep has gotta be Spice Girls, come on. Yeah, he loves the Spice Girls. If you were a Spice Girl, which one would you be? Slippery Spice. Yeah. Let's, uh, who would he be? <laughs> Slippery Spice. <laughs> uh, Skank, um, skanky Spice. <laughs> Fishy Spice. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, 
<laughs> Mine would probably be Fuck the Police by N.W.A. Yeah. What, you don't like cops? You're all like, woo! But, but very gingerly, so no one can, like, see you. Say, woo! Thanks. Thank you, love. Awesome costume. I was wondering what your favourite scene was to film and Chase, I'm really hoping it's not that octopus scene, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> it is, no, it's, it definitely was not. Um, my, fa my favourite scene to film was probably, well, it was probably early on in the first season just because it was, it was just so new back then and it was, I guess it was probably the dolphin scene. I mean, you're on like 1.30 in the morning on a Friday night, ejecting a CGI dolphin through a windshield like 40 feet was awesome. I'm like, yeah, this is the show we're doing, you know? So that was the, probably the moment I was like, this is great. Uh, mine would be uh, season two, the uh, car ride with uh, Jack and Aaron, uh, with Huey and Starlight when we're going down to South Carolina looking for Lady Liberty. That was a really uh, cool experience because at the time, the boys, we only shot with our little tiny group. We never worked with them. So I never really knew them that well up until probably the end of season two. Season one, I never saw them on set. So like working with Aaron, it was like, it was like I was on a different show. You know, I obviously knew who she was, but I just never had the opportunity to work with her. So that was really cool. We became super duper cool. And, uh, and then slowly but surely, I started feeling like we were the same show. Because for the first two seasons, it felt like we were on two different shows. We'd never see each other hardly. I like doing crowd scenes. Like standing up on the stage, like shouting at crowds and yeah. no one can pay attention to anything but me. That's what I like. <laughs> Is that why you're here today? Pardon? Is that why you're here today? <laughs> no, if I had my way, it would just be me. These fuckers would be gone. <laughs> but unfortunately, I can't get rid of them. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm kidding. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. If, you. if you could play another character in The Boys, which one would it be? Starlight. <laughs> I was going to say Starlight. Yeah, no. Starlight. Um... I'd probably play one of the boys' side, you know, get a little more action in there. Any one of the boys, really. Frenchie. Yeah, it's hard to say. I'd quite like to play the octopus. <laughs> For no particular fucking reason. <laughs> what a, look how handsome he is. Who wouldn't want to be the fucking octopus? Ah, uh, you stop it. <laughs> Are we ever going to find out why Mother's Milk is called Mother's Milk? And if not, why do you think he's called Mother's Milk? Because he took my mother's milk. <laughs> it used to be mine. <laughs> no, it's funny that you ask that because in season three, I have this big, uh, uh, what do you call it when you talk to yourself? Monologue. Monologue. In insanity. Monologue. <laughs> I have this big monologue where I explain where the name comes from, and they cut it out the show. Aww. It was oh, super yeah. long. Yeah, it was super long. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know that. It was like a 15-minute monologue. Uh, so he tells his backstory, why it's called Mother's Milk. So I can't tell you, even though I know, because who knows? It might change. It might, it might come yeah. up. Yeah. Thank you. It's in the graphic novel, though, isn't it? It's not the same story. It's not the story. same thing. Yeah, no, we changed it a little bit. We altered it. This Hello. is slightly less morbid than my sister's death row final meal question. <laughs> but, um, with season four coming out, what was it like working with Jeffrey D. Morgan? Um, I didn't have anything to do with him. I haven't even met him yet. So I'd worked with him on an independent movie years ago, in like 2009 or 10, and so seeing him in, in the trailer was awesome. We like kind of hugged and. Uh, and caught up. He's just like the best dude ever. So, yeah. But again, I didn't really get to, you know, work with him as well. So, yeah. Definitely a great guy. Amazing dude. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. And super serious about his work. Like, super serious. Yeah. Okay. Good you. dude. All right, guys. Hello. 
I did have a better question, but uh, someone's already thought of it. So I'll go with my second one. Um, if you could team up with any uh, Marvel villain or hero, who would it be and why? And then I've got one little question just for the deep afterwards. All right. Any Marvel team? Uh, Thanos. I love Thanos. I, I, thought it was a, I thought it was the best villain, best Marvel villain that I've seen in a long time. He had a fucking philosophy. He was trying to do something. It wasn't right necessarily, but... He had I just, the right idea though, didn't he? He had the right idea of half the fucking <laughs> beings in the universe disappeared. He was trying to get balance. I just thought, and Josh Brolin's amazing, so I thought he was a pretty great villain. So I'd, and he's tough, so I'd team up with him. Hulk. My guy. Yeah, I love the Hulk. I love his whole backstory. He's not a villain. He said team up with villain a hero or a hero. villain. Oh, did Whichever you say hero wants. or villain? Well, pardon me. We didn't want to just say heroes because Homelander wouldn't team up with a hero. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the Winter Soldier for me. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I'm buddies with Sebastian. So, you know, yeah, we have to do that. That'd be cool. Um, and my second question. For the um, deep. We've already had the deep audio book, number one. Will we be getting an even deeper number two? Ha! <laughs> the rising tide, yes. Um, go deeper, go home. Uh, I, yeah, it would be actually fun to do like a full-length movie, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, the trailer was fun to shoot. It was so ridiculous, but uh, yeah. The idea that the deep does like C-level movies on the side is kind of funny, I thought, so yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Take it easy. The overacting in those commercials from both of you guys <laughs> yeah. is incredible, <laughs> by the way. Massive hats off. Some of my favorite moments it's in the fun. show. Yeah, yeah, stuff is fun. Hi, uh, what was the most awkward scene to film? Well, for me, it was definitely any scene with that octopus. <laughs> because not only is it not really there, it's like a wet, and you know, dead thing, it's like a rubber thing you're just talking to in bed. It's really awkward, so yeah, that's it. Um, I had to do a hanging <laughs> sex scene with Aya Cash that played Stormfront. And um, <laughs> it's really awkward because you're in a harness and you're up in the middle of the air and you got no pants on and the harness is swinging and you're trying to make it look sexy, <laughs> but you're being told it's not looking sexy. And we just couldn't stop fucking laughing. And at the same time, a chandelier had to drop and they had two. And the first time they dropped the visual, the, the special effect, we were giggling and we fucked the whole thing up. And then our boss, Eric came in and goes, okay, so, that you guys are having a good time, but we have one left, so don't fuck it up. And uh, that was pretty weird, being like 10 foot in the air doing simulated sex with someone who's like your sister. Um, yeah, it was pretty weird. I think it looked very hot, though. I think <laughs> the outcome, it looked really good. So in spite of what you've seen Mother's Milk go through for the last three seasons, my most awkward happens in season four. And when you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you. Who, who is each one of your favorite characters from the show? How old are you? I'm um, 13. You can't watch our show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Who's, where's your parents? Uh, they're not here, are they? They abandoned you because they're not good parents. I'm kidding. They're great parents wherever they are. So what was the question? Uh, who, is your who is each one of your favorite characters from the show? Ooh. That's a good question. I'm a big fan, I'm a, a, and, and it's not just because he's here. I'm a big fan of the deep. I think his Hi, thank you. stupidity and comedy <laughs> is pretty fucking inter fl fl flipping entertaining. <laughs> Ten earmuffs, earmuffs. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, uh, I, I would say the same. Uh, a lot of, I, I never see Chase's work. Yeah, I know, that's, I, I, I no. I'm sorry, bro, I'm sorry. I love, I love Anthony's oh, work. Oh, fuck off. I've told him. Earmuffs, earmuffs. 
But 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 like Chase Chase. I think it was was it season three where you were alone the whole freaking uh, yeah I was alone season two and it, yeah. season two yeah, yeah it was so interesting to watch like what he was doing I was like really like uh, interested and like amazed at how interesting it was and he was by himself the whole freaking season yeah so that crazy. that you, I, I think I told you too like thank you yeah you did uh, good I thought that that work was phenomenal thanks man yeah you I, were good too uh, I'm changing my mind it's not the deep. <laughs> Colby, Colby Menfee that plays yes, Ashley, Colby, yeah. which you won't know who this is because you haven't seen the show because you're so young. But when you see the show, there's a red-headed girl who's brilliant. Every fucking scene she's in, she steals. She's amazing. Yeah. For me, too, I would say getting to see the boys' side of, of the episodes. Like, I never really get to see any of them and what the work's going on. So collectively, just watching the boys all in the same scene together and see all that stuff is really cool for me. And Auntie's my favorite to work with though. So yeah, I, I really, I get to see his work all the time and we have fun on set. I try to make him laugh and that's it. Thank you, Thank you young man. Hi, so this is a question for Chase, sorry. Um, but if, <sighs> if the boys and the old Gossip Girl existed in the same universe, what do you think Nate Archibald and Gossip Girl would say about the boys in the deep? They would just all get murdered instantly. This is the crossover Everyone. we all want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking Gossip Girl yeah. and the boys. The, the two polar opposites. This, I bet someone's pitched this somewhere. This is like something in Hollywood that they would actually you pitch. Go, you should go and pitch this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Teen version, yes. If times get tough after this show. Yeah. Go to fucking New C York zip code. Go to Old CBS money. and pitch it. Yeah. Uh, everyone on Gossip Girl will get murdered probably, like right away, because they're all pretty soft except compared for Blair. to. Except for Blair. That's true. That's true. That's true. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We've only got time for all you guys in the queue now, so you guys will be the last questions. Um, I just want to hear from Anthony himself. Because um, I don't know if Twitter is a lie or not. Um, are you voicing Homelander in Mortal Kombat 1 or not? Oh. Hey, have you seen Call of Duty? <laughs> yeah. I voice Call of Duty. So go play that. Um, and one more thing. How comfortable or uncomfortable are your suits? Ma uh, do you want to go first? I mean, my, mine is pretty relatively comfortable. It's just like a big wetsuit, right? Unless it's really hot. Yeah, but Anthony, I see him struggling a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not so comfy. They're not ergonomic. They're designed to look good. They don't fit everywhere very well. <laughs> and they can be pretty uncomfortable. Very hot. Very it's hot. It's very tight, though. It's like so... I always forget, like, first episode back in the new season. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> you know, zip that thing up, so... It's, yeah. you know, it's they're okay. not, not so much fun. Yeah. Hi, you okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. So my question is, there's been a rumor that uh, Jensen has been uh, campaigning for Jared to join the boys. My question is, is there anyone who you've worked with before that you'd like to see in the boys universe? Who's Jared? Who's Jared? I don't know. Huh? A show called Supernatural or something. Oh, his brother on, so I'm sorry, I don't know what, what you meant. Um... No. I, I mean, I can't, there's so many good actors around. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head other than Tim Oliphant, I think would be great. I love him. Mads with all the people that we can't get. <laughs> be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty open. I've been happy with, you know, who they've brought in to yeah. work with us. And it's, it's, it's magically worked, so. Yeah, they always nail it. I mean, uh... Yeah, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> Fair enough, thank you guys. All right, mate. Hi, big fan of your show, but also big fan of Gossip Girl. All right. Um, so how do the vibes on set differ with this show compared to Gossip Girl and your relationships with your co-workers with them versus this show? They differ greatly. <laughs> All the vibes differ. It's, they were so completely... Uh, like polar opposite experiences just working wide and like filming and blocking and the way that's shot and everything um, but as far as relationships go I do think I got lucky twice like 
literally hit the lottery twice on the quality of people and friendships and like lifelong uh, memories you make. We, you know, we, we didn't have one, not even one drop of toxicity in any, in any of those sets and, and uh, relationships. It, we're, we're so, so lucky. And I think we all feel the same on our show too. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I am very nervous just to say. So, um, out of all the people you've worked with in The Boys, who is the biggest, who is the most annoying dick and the most funniest? <laughs> I don't know. Fuck I off. Think. Uh, I'm probably the most annoying dick. <laughs> and and uh, who would be the funniest? He's pretty funny. Thanks. The, the deep is pretty funny. Ah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. Who? Uh, Colby, the redhead, is very funny. She's great to work with. Yeah, we I don't love really her. have any dickheads on the. I uh, think you might might disagree, but but I don't. I don't think there is any dickheads uh, on the show. We're really fortunate in that respect. Yeah, totally. Yeah, not like Gossip Girl. They were all fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> He's just being polite. I'm kidding. Uh, earmuffs on that kid. But, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, guys. Hello. Uh, Hi. I, I hate being the last one, by the way, so thanks for that. Um, my question is, basically, when you've been reading the script, has there ever been times where you've just been like, what the fuck is going on here? Has there ever been times you've been, like, really shocked? Almost every time. <laughs> every page. Every, yeah, every, every time you turn a page. No, that it, it is. The know. octopus was definitely a shocking moment for me, yeah. It's just like... How do you explain that to your families when they... You think? don't. You just <laughs> buckle up. Yeah, yeah. No, I did actually have to... Like, guys, there's this... Probably shouldn't watch, you know, a few of these scenes. But they love it. They thought it was hilarious, so... Depends what kind of family you've got. <laughs> you know? No, it's, there's, there's some pretty wacky stuff in there, but yeah. what I've learned about the show is every time I read something and I'm like, oh, they've gone too far, it ends up being like one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Like in season, was it three? Where the little man went up the... Yeah. You, oh, yeah, I read the urethra, that. Urethra? Um, and sneezed. <laughs> and fucking blew him up. I'm like, who thought that up? For a start, who, who, who's sick enough to think that up? But I remember reading that and thinking that was just like, nah, that's not going to work. And I was, I think I cried laughing watching that. It was so funny. So you, you never know what to expect. Thank you so much. Have a nice Christmas. Thank Merry you Christmas, too. Merry Christmas, yeah. Merry Christmas. Everyone give it up for the cast of the boys. Absolute pleasure Thank to have you, you here in Manchester. Yeah. Thanks, guys.